That's the sixth question. Does war and recession have any relevance to each other? Well, if you, if, if I understand you correctly, is there an interconnection between mm. war and recession? <coughs> well, we have to understand that, that war is a geopolitical issue and recession is an economic financial issue. And because war, uh, the destruction that it creates and the turmoil and the, the effect on the socio-economic uh, environment within that country, war often leads to recession. But vice versa is also true. Recession often leads to war. And uh, the, the Second World War is probably one of the best examples. Germany coming out, the old Weimar Republic coming out of the 1933, 34, 35 recession. And it had, uh, it had a huge impact on the psychology of the, of the German population, which made them vulnerable to the abuses of the Nazi party. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, I mean, it was less than seven years later, people who had been just beaten to the ground just have not built up sufficient energy to to oppose uh, the the Nazi philosophy, and and we've seen that all over the world that we we extreme poverty uh, uh, um, takes uh, over in a country that eventually the people will uh, uh, rise up and 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 overthrow their uh, their, their, their country. And uh, such turmoil always uh, leads to war. I, I think, Raul, what is important for us to understand is that beside the wars that is currently raging in the world, in, in, in Syria and Iraq uh, and in Yemen, which has been uh, uh, bombed into obliteration, there, there are other wars that have become very important. There's the currency war. Make no mistake. There's a currency war. One country is trying to outdo and outmanipulate the other country um, because uh, of the effect and the importance of money in the global economy. We could understand we live in a different world. We live, live in a global village. Uh, and so there, there's a currency war going on, um, which is linked to the economic uh, demands of specific economics. But there's a, there's a second war going on. There's a war for resources uh, going on. Now, the mere fact that the, oil, the bottom has fallen out of the oil price and all commodities has taken a, uh, a huge uh, 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 blast uh, from, from, from the, the, the turmoil in China. Um, we have to understand that that doesn't mean that commodities has become uh, something that nobody worries about because few commodities are, 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 are things that's getting scarcer and scarcer and scarcer and scarcer. Uh, there was talk of peak oil not too long ago, 2010. People predicted oil to go to $200 a barrel because we've reached peak oil. That doesn't mean that the world hasn't got any more oil. The world has got enough oil for another three centuries. The problem is the price of getting to it. Because the late last discoveries, even in Kenya, which very few people know, has huge discoveries of, of oil. And that's why turmoil is brewing within Kenya already. It's because of the currency war, offshore and onshore. But that oil offshore is 10,000 feet under the sea. It, you can't take that out for less than about 130 to 140 dollars a barrel. Isn't that what the war is also about and it's directly related to economics? Correct. I mean, we understand that, that ISIS is the child of the CIA and Hillary Clinton mm. uh, coming into being. Uh, the, the overthrow of the Assad regime has got nothing to do with his human rights record. I mean, there are dictators in this world that's got a ten times worse human rights uh, uh, record. It's all about a, a, a gas pipeline that uh, the U.S. wanted built from Qatar to Europe to counter Russian uh, or Europe's uh, dependency on Russian gas. And Assad stood 
squarely in the U.S.'s way of doing that. And the U.S. then funded ISIS. In, uh, the, the, these were the Al-Qaeda uh, uh, remnants um, uh, that, 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 that they were found. In actual fact, when they overthrew uh, Gaddafi in Libya, and they started uh, 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 providing them with, with weapons. And suddenly when Hillary Clinton realized that she's contravened U.S. laws by giving uh, uh, weapons, that was during her stint as Secretary of State, weapons to ISIS, uh, she she directed it to Qatar, where they from Qatar they were were were, were uh, 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 provided with 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 the weapons, and uh, then when uh, she realised that, that they, she's going to get caught out, her emails disappeared. She was using her private emails for that, and the FBI is on to her, and I want to still see what happens with that. Um, it's interesting because that uh, the Benghazi. Uh, uh, bombing of the U.S. Embassy and, uh, and uh, the killing of the U.S. ambassadors directly related to those actions that she took. Mm. Yeah. Yes, well, I, I just see that um, money and economics, um, when there's de depression or recession and there is more, um, you can say, more tension in then the banks still benefit when there's war going on because your arms are a big uh, business. Banks, banks always benefit from everything. But there's another very important thing that I just want to draw to your attention. That war becomes an, an probably one of the best detractors of a population's uh, uh, attention to, its, to the turmoil uh, internally. Um, I mean, there was never ever any dispute in the South China Sea or, or those two pieces of rock that China now suddenly claims uh, uh, ownership of. It is only when the Chinese economy started picking up problems towards the latter part of 2014 and throughout 2015 that the Chinese government began to rattle uh, the, 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 or, or sound the rattles around the so-called injustices of Second World War and Japan's uh, claim of ownership which should be disputed on two useless pieces of rock in the South China Sea. So those are the typical things that happen when a country is, is experiencing internal uh, turmoil. You'll find government looks at some sort of injustice perceived or real from the past that it can be can, can pick up. In South Africa, we have a perfect example of that. Mm. And we've pop polarized our whole society because of that. Mm. When Zuma began to sound the apartheid blame story for every possible uh, uh, injustice that, uh, or, or, uh, that happens in, in, in this country. And it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. Mm. Because, you know, that draws the attention away from the ANC's 21 years of incompetence of managing this country and grow its economy. We have to look at the potential that South Africa had in 1994. Before 1994, our marketplace consisted of 5 million white people. 1994 opened a marketplace and, and, and expanded that marketplace 10 times to 50 million people. Yes. And yet we could, couldn't exploit it. Yes, well, if we take the amount of taxpayers now, it's not even 5 million. Correct. It's less than what it was in 1994. Which is, which is actually sad. And what, do, what is the, the, who doing to increase the taxpayers? So basically the country's tax burden is on 10% of the population. You see, let me just get on that, and I don't want to get necessarily uh, detracted by, by local politics. But because we sit with a population that's financially, to a large extent, illiterate, because 40% of the South